In the shadow of downtown Denver, under the watchful eye of local police, migrants gather outside one of several hotels which currently serve as shelters. These are families, mostly, many of them from Venezuela, who've escaped the hardships of their country and survived an often dangerous journey north to seek asylum in the U.S. It's tragedy upon tragedy. They left such a beautiful place. Everybody here left a very beautiful place, and it's out desperation, so just wanting to do what I can. Kim Montenegro is among volunteers who are helping these folks clear the hurdles that stand between them and a new, at least temporary, life. If I can help, I'll do it. To say that Denver has been overwhelmed by this surge of migrants, more than 38,000 in a little over a year, would be an understatement. The city has spent roughly $40 million to house and care for them so far. That number is expected to go up dramatically. Our immigration system is broken. Uh, I mean, it has been broken for a long time. Economist Alex Padilla with Metropolitan State University of Denver says the city's hands are tied. It can't turn its back on this group, and there's no way to quickly integrate them into society. Uh, the city in Denver uh, uh, has to make choices and there is no good choice. They are all by choices. As of today, there's a 42-day limit on shelter stays for migrant families, a 14-day limit for individuals. Where do they go after that? Out in the street. Issues like the border dispute and budgets are far from these people's minds. A lot of politics. It's all boils down to politics and money. And that's sad because these are human beings. These are people, family and children. and. You know, several being released this week onto the street and the cold street. Elizabeth Villalobos is among those providing food and other essentials. I don't want them to starve here. If I can do at least that, you know, if I can take them boots and coats and two appointments, then I'm doing my part. And while banned from holding real jobs, some new arrivals do what they can informally to earn a little income. It's work they probably never imagined they'd be doing. I like to squeegee my own car. I really want someone else to win it with their dirty water, you know. But, but everybody's trying to make a buck here and there, I guess. The city has appealed for federal help, a coordinated entry plan for asylum seekers, as well as faster work authorization approvals. There are jobs waiting to be filled. Sometimes short-term costs can tra translate in very long-term benefits. Those benefits are still a long way down the road. A very bumpy road for those living through and dealing with this crisis. Hendrick Sabrandi, CGTN, Denver.